What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with a new style of video, a new style of series of tutorials geared specifically towards survival. To the point where I'm actually going to play these through in survival mode myself. That way I can kind of make sure that everything I'm saying is accurate. But also you can see literally what I'm doing and there won't be any of these questions about like how do I go about building what you've just built because I don't know how to get up on top of it in order to put that particular part in place. But step one in survival is, of course, getting that atmospheric lander down on the ground and choosing where you want to land it. So I figured that would be a really good place to start. And so this is kind of a post commentary of one of my landings, just so that I can give you a bit of an idea of what I'm choosing to do, why I'm choosing to go to those locations, and also how best to control this thing. So step one, as I'm sure you saw, was to bring the entire craft up to a point where it's not plummeting towards the Earth. So you have a horizon indicator, that's that flat line with the two little sort of flicks up at the end that goes across the screen and moves around as you move around. And what it's doing is telling you what level is flat. What is a flat level for your ship to be in? And it's nothing to do with the ground underneath you, it's entirely to do with, as it says, the horizon. And that's important in relation to your thrusters. So the main thrusters on this ship are the two big, um, large ship atmospheric engines on the sides, and they're really powerful. And those are the ones that are doing pretty much everything as far as the ship's movement is concerned. The other little ones have very little power behind them. And so you can use that horizon indicator not only to make sure that you, if you get it you know, from first person view, if it is completely flat and level in front of your eyes, then you are completely flat and level, and your, all of your dampers will be working to a point where at the end of it you will hover. But you can use it more than that to your own advantage as well. So you will see in this video that I'm occasionally leaning the ship forwards or leaning it backwards or sometimes from side to side. And that's to kind of encourage the ship to either use those thrusters to slow it down or at times to actually gain ourselves more speed. So if we lean a bit forwards, it's reducing the damping effect of those two large engines because they're no longer pointing straight at the ground. And so it allows us to actually speed up going forwards without having to put more thrust in. So it's a very efficient way of doing things fuel-wise. So I was lucky in this one where I got to land in an ice area. It's, I, I happen to like ice areas because there's very few trees around. And more importantly, where to mine for ore is much more obvious. So you can see here I've sort of kind of got a vague idea of a landing spot now. I've seen an area that's kind of flat and low. But more importantly, I've seen an area that's got these sort of grey patches. Now, they are indicating that there is ore in that sort of area, but they are much, much more obvious in a snowy environment. So if when you spawn, you're lucky enough to have something in sight that looks like it might have snow, I really would advise flying in that direction. Obviously, it tends to be up on top of mountains, for example. You know, it's in the places you expect to find it. But I would head in those directions because they tend to be much, much easier to find the ore. And once you've found an idea of a landing location, it's a good idea then to get your atmospheric lander in kind of low. And you want to be keeping this idea of leaning the ship rather than trying to use the thrusters too much, because that's a much, much more efficient way of doing it on your power. It means you can fly for quite a lot longer. And we're trying to get down to about uh, just under 100 meters. And we're going to fly really gently and slowly to just get a look at what's under the ground as far as ore is concerned. And you can just see that when you're at sort of about 40 meters, you get this little white light that occurs. It's like a reflection of the thrusters on the ground. That's basically a good idea to mean it's time to pull up a bit. You've got a bit low. So use that as a judge. And we're just going to hover a little bit. We're going to float around, investigate some of the more likely looking spots and see what ore is in some of these gray patches. So in this case, I've passed up a couple of the grey patches because I'm heading towards a slightly flatter bit of terrain. It's obviously very helpful, especially if you're building wheeled vehicles, to have a flat bit of terrain to start off on. But that's the general gist of things. I'm looking around for somewhere flat and then somewhere with decent ore available. Now, you've got to keep an eye on your fuel time. Obviously, the longer you fly, the more time you spend in this lander, the less batteries you're going to have at the end of it. And while you do have parts in the ship to build solar panels, what you don't have is any solar panels to begin with. So be aware that you're just going to drop out of the sky as soon as that fuel time runs out. But also be aware that it lies a bit at times as to how much it says you've got left. So take it with a pinch of salt, keep an eye on the batteries in the control panel and how much they actually have left in them. And that will give you a much better idea of how much travelling you can do. Because the better, you, better starting spot you get, the easier the game is going to be for you. So in this video, I find a pretty nice starting spot. We've got iron, we've got nickel, we've got cobalt, and it looks like there's a number of other deposits in the local area. So at that point, it's just a case of landing. And 
for this particular landing it was pretty easy because you're on a flat surface but the idea again is to go into first person view and use that horizon indicator to flatten yourself out so you know you're perfectly level get into a hovering position and then you can lower yourself really carefully and even at night you can be pretty reliant on the altitude indicator that little meters number to dictate how far off the ground you are just keep an eye out for those landing gear as soon as you see one pop green lock it and then you're set all you want to do then before you start doing anything else is go down through the control panel in the craft and turn off all the stuff that's kind of not really necessary stuff that's using power that doesn't need to be at the moment so at the moment you're not using the refinery you're not using the assembler there's some timer blocks there's some programming blocks on there you could probably turn off the beacon as well and leave a gps spot where you are so go into the control panel and create a new gps marker because that way you know where this is and this ship's not about to move anytime soon it's it's your base of operations to begin with and you're probably going to go and convert it into something else more useful before you go anywhere else anyway so hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea of a how to use the horizon indicator and those two big thrusters on this ship to their best effect. They are what's going to slow you down the best and they're also a way of giving you a decent amount of propulsion without needing to use more power than just the bare dampers. And I hope it also gives you an idea of what sort of stuff you're looking out for when it comes to landing zones, especially with how to find potential ore sites. Although, as I said, it is a lot easier to see these things against a white background than it is to try and spot them when you're flying over rocky or grassy terrain. So let me know what you think of this video, guys. And in particular, let me know what you think of this idea for a sort of new series. It's going to end up with some kind of long videos. This one was definitely going to be one of the short ones because I'm not really building anything. But if you guys think that's, you know, some people have suggested it and potentially this is a better way of doing tutorials. So if you think it's worthwhile, hit me up, let me know in the comments. And obviously, if you think there's some things I can do to improve this format, then hit me up down below as well. And I'm very interested to know ways I can improve. I'm far from perfect. So if you did like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It does really help me in the channel out. And of course, expect more of these to come in future. This is just episode one. So next episode will be the very first steps. Now you're down on the planet. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.